Visit Zayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. If you have a four-sided umbrella and the fabric needs to be replaced, it can sometimes be rather pricey and finding the right size can be difficult. Why not consider sewing one yourself? In this tutorial video, we'll show you all the steps required and we'll even provide a link to a calculator which will make the job easy. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sarite. In today's video tutorial, we're gonna show you how to make a square or rectangular shaped umbrella. We've also designed a fabric calculator that shows you exactly the amount of materials and supplies you need for your particular size square or rectangular umbrella. Not only that, this fabric calculator shows you exactly how to cut each one of the fabric gores out and the fly in the center. So we've taken all the guesswork out of the equation of building a square or rectangular shaped umbrella. Let's get started. We'll be taking some measurements of the old umbrella, then we'll enter them into the calculator. First, we need to open up the calculator. We're going to show you how to do that at the Sayrite website. At the Sayrite website, scroll down to the bottom. There you will see a resource called Fabric Calculator. Click on that. Here you will see multiple projects. We want the umbrella project, so we'll click on that. This will pull up two calculators, one for a round and one for a four-sided umbrella. We'll click on the four-sided umbrella. The Sayrite Fabric Calculator calculates for an umbrella with four, six, or eight gores. Let's talk a little bit about what a gore is. If you look at this umbrella from the underside, there are eight ribs all around the perimeter. That does not mean there are eight gores. So here's a seam that goes up this rib. This rib has no seam, and then this rib has a seam. And this is one of the ribs. If you look underneath, you can see this is one of the steel ribs of the umbrella. We consider anywhere that there's a seam to be a gore. So this triangular section here is a complete gore. Now it's important to know how many gores are on your umbrella. The Sayrite Fabric Calculator has a selection for four, for six, and for eight. This is a four gore umbrella. We do not count this rib as one of the gores. The gore is from seam to seam. Most square or rectangular shaped umbrellas are typically a four gore umbrella. Next, we need to determine the width and the length. We're going to show you how to do that next. So I'm going to tilt the umbrella so I can get a measurement of the short side of the umbrella first. The short side is considered the width. So this is the short side of the umbrella. We're going to measure from that corner to this corner and I get 118 inches. So now we're going to measure the long side. If this is a square umbrella, both sides would be equal. This one's not. And you just put those equal measurements in the calculator. So we've taped the tape measure up to this corner and then we'll walk to this corner. And what we get is 156 inches. We'll enter those measurements into the Sayrite Fabric Calculator. A for us is 118 and B is 156. The next measurement is called the hip measurement. We'll explain that next. So this is the hip measurement. And we, what we, what we want to do is we want to go all the way up to the middle of, or the peak of the umbrella and measure diagonally to one of the corners. And I'm almost at the middle here, and what I get is 97 inches. I'm going to add uh, probably two inches to that because it's not obviously at the extreme middle of the umbrella at the top. It's a couple inches off. So I'm going to say 99 inches here. The Sayrite fabric calculator does give a suggested hip measurement, but you want to put in exactly what you measured. For us, 99 inches. To pick your fabric, go to the Sayrite website and hover over Fabric, then click on Outdoor Living Fabric. To the left, you'll see an Outdoor Living Uses. Click on More and you'll see a drop-down for Umbrellas. Click on that. Here you'll see almost a hundred fabrics that you can select from that are excellent for outdoor umbrellas. We're going to choose Top Notch 1S Tan. Before you start marking your fabric and cutting it, you must know the exact width of that fabric. This is a top notch 1S, and on our website it says 60 inches wide. But as I measure it here, 
what we get is 60 and a quarter inches, and I must put that into the fabric calculator. Many umbrellas are made from a Sunbrella upholstery fabric, and that upholstery fabric has uh, edges that are unusable, selvage edges that are left raw. So you'll need to cut off the excess fabric in those situations, and then after you cut the selvage edges off of both the left side and the right side, you'll have to re-measure your fabric, and then put that measurement of the new width after you're done cutting off the selvage edge into the fabric calculator. For us, our edges are finished right now, so I'm gonna put 60 and a quarter inches into the fabric calculator. Now we'll hit the calculate button. This first box, the umbrella assembly, shows a rendition of the umbrella looking from the top down. You can see the fly in red, and the green is the opening for the fly. The calculations below that image are calculated dimensions based on your entries and are used to draw the panel rendition below. You can skip this box, as it is usually not referenced unless you want an actual breakdown of each triangle section. So just scroll down past it to the next box called Lists of Materials. It's very important. These are the list of materials that will be required to build your rectangular shaped umbrella. Each of these headings are hyperlinks, so you can go directly to the product that you need to build your umbrella. Now we'll show you how to use the calculator results to pattern the fabric. We'll be using the Fabric Calculator's panel rendition to pattern our fabric, but first a little bit about the fabric. This Top Notch 1S has a right side and a wrong side. You can feel this one is very smooth. This is the outside surface. The underside will have a tacky surface because of a coating that's applied to it. Now that's not the case for Sombrella upholstery fabric. Both sides are usable for the outside surface. So as I look at the panel rendition, what I want to do is I want to orientate the fabric so that I'm always following the way the rendition is laid out. So I'm going to place my phone this direction. And this says to measure down for my first measurement, 21.85. And I do that from this side of the fabric. Here's an image of the panel rendition on the Sayrite Fabric Calculator. We'll measure from the left side down to our first indicated location and mark the fabric. 21.85, you don't have to be extremely precise, but you want to be close. That will put it right about there. So we just measured this edge. Now we measured from the top down, and it says 43.69. The other measurement is with an arrow pointing that direction, 30.62. So to get that measurement, I measure from this side of the fabric over 30.62. From the top edge of our fabric, we'll measure down 43.69 for us and mark the fabric. Then we'll use a T-square and measure over from the side 30.62. 43.69 would be approximately there. Now I'm not going to mark this heavily because of the fact that I have to measure from that side as well. I've put a, uh, a, uh, a T-square on the edge here so that I can mark directly over from this mark that I made here. And this mark is at 30.62, which is right here. So I'm going to mark at that location, and that is my uh, X marks the spot. Next, from the left side of the fabric, from the top down, we'll measure down 21.12 for us and mark the fabric. Okay, for this one, I measure down 21.12, I believe. Yep, 21.12, which is right about here. Now we'll measure down on the left side of the fabric to the next mark. You can actually take that last measurement, subtract the top measurement from it, and use that new figure to measure from the last mark down. This can be helpful if you have to measure a long way down the fabric and you don't have room to measure. From this top corner, I measure down to this point, which is 41.48. But I don't want to measure all the way from that corner. I'm going to measure from my last mark. So I'm going to put 41.48 minus whatever this last measurement was, 21.12. So I measure from this mark down 120.36 to make a mark here. If you had a long floor space, this would be pretty easy because you just go down and mark each location with by rolling out the tape measure once. 
we're doing it on top of a table, which makes it a little bit more complicated because I need my next measurement from that last measurement is 120.36. My table's not wide enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark 60 inches from my last mark and then another 60 inches, which will give me 120 and then the 0.36. So we're gonna roll it out to this next mark. So if we had a lot of floor space, you could just roll out all the fabric, measure down the left side and the right side with your tape measure, and just placing marks as you go. But since we don't have that, we're measuring on top of a table and we're doing it uh, section by section. 60.36 is right there. X marks the spot. So we're gonna strike our first line according to our panel rendition here. And that's from this mark to this mark. So I'm measuring over from this edge the same measurement I have over there, it's just so I can make a straight line, 30.62 here. And that means that I make a mark from that mark to this mark. Then as my panel rendition shows, I go from this mark here to this mark here. And I strike a line. I've moved my fabric a little bit and I mark from this mark to that mark, just as the panel rendition shows. Then I mark from this to the mark on this side of the fabric right there with my straight edge. We'll continue doing this down the length of the fabric following the panel rendition. What if your straight edge is not long enough? Well, here's a little trick. I'm using a long straight edge plus a yardstick because it's not long enough here to go from mark to mark. So I'm gonna mark on the yardstick first, then I'm gonna move it out of the way and I'll mark along this one to that mark on the other side. Once you're done, it's time to cut out the fabric. Okay, because I don't want to continue to roll out the fabric, I'm going to cut off these that are already marked. And I like to use the uh, Sayerite Edge hot knife for this because it seals the edge of the fabric so that it will not unravel. That's good for this uh, uh, top notch 1S and it's also excellent for some umbrella upholstery fabric. We're using the uh, tempered cutting glass on the bottom side, which transfers all the heat to the uh, cut of the fabric and it also makes it easier for the hot knife to glide along the edge of the fabric. Next, we're gonna sew the fly sections together. This is called the fly. And what it is is it's a separate piece of fabric that is sewn on to allow air to escape. You can notice here that the air can escape around the edges and that keeps the umbrella from flying away in heavy winds. And the calculator does calculate for this fly section. Now I've laid out the fly sections, which is the center at the top of the umbrella. This is the outside surface. This is the underside for all of them. So I have the outside surfaces facing up. So they go together by simply taking the outside surfaces and they face each other. So we take this panel and it would go on top like this, and then it will be sewn here. So to do that, outside surfaces would face each other. We're gonna put double-sided tape. This is a 3 8 inch seam stick for canvas along one of these edges. And which edge, whether this panel or that panel, that doesn't matter. When I get to the end, what I like to do is put my finger on it and break it. That way it's easy to peel off the transfer paper. So now I'll peel off the transfer paper and that reveals the double-sided tape. So we're gonna take this panel, outside surfaces face each other. We're gonna start here at the center. We're gonna uh, match up the end here and I'm gonna be careful not to pull on one panel more than the other because I can't actually stretch it, especially if it's a umbrella upholstery fabric. And I'm gonna baste it down so the edges are flush. And then there's a little bit of a dog ear here at the end. That's not a big deal. So don't worry about that. See, see we're off by that much. 
you might be off by a little bit more, you might be more accurate. It's not gonna make a hill of beans difference. So that one's together. Now we're gonna take this and sew it. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna um, mess with the tension to make sure that uh, you're happy with it. And I'm doing that in some scrap. So I'm trying to make sure that the knot is kind of in, in the middle of the fabric, not too much on the top. I can see the knot a little bit here, which means I need to back this off by about a half revolution. Bottom side, yeah, I can't see the knot here. So I'm gonna reduce the tension because if you have too much tension, like we did here at the beginning, I didn't show that, but see how it, it puckers the fabric? Way too much upper tension. This is a V69 thread with a size number 16 needle. So now let's try it now, going this direction. So what I want is I want a good looking stitch and I want as few of puckers as possible. And I'll cut it here. So the top side looks really good. There's no puckering going on. Knot looks good. Bottom side also looks good. We've got perfect tension. We're gonna use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide uh, and we're gonna put it on the half inch mark of the needle plate. I typically do it like this, but to get better video, I put it on the side so you can see better. Um, you can do it the other way if you'd like. So we wanna sew a half inch uh, from the raw edges of the fabric that we just seamed together. I have a straight stitch. I'm set up in a six millimeter. And again, I'm using V69 thread and a size number 16 needle. Do a little bit of reversing, just sew down this edge. This is the first of our semi-flat filled seam. First stitch. A little bit of reversing. So those are sewn together. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. I'm putting double-sided tape on the outside surface of this fabric. This is a top notch 1S. Take this pa panel and lay it so outside surfaces face each other. Start at the center match up the edges at the center and start basting, just like we did before. We have these two together. Now we're gonna put basting tape along this edge so that we can marry them together. When you get to the seam, kind of splay it out so that you can baste it so that it, the seam is flat. Peel off the transfer paper. Then we will take this panel and we'll lay it so outside surfaces are facing each other right on top. I like to start at the center, not at the um, ends. Splay this one out so it lays flat. Lay this so that the seam is directly on top of the previous seam and start basting. Go from left to right or right to left. I don't care which way you go. This is such an easy project. Not much thinking involved. If you're a little bit off, you can peel this up. That's the beauty of double-sided tape. And rebaste. And then we'll base from here to the other side. I'm gonna turn this around so I can get to it better. Okay, when we got to the end here, we have a little bit of a dog ear again. I'm not concerned about that. We can trim that off after we're done. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew a straight stitch, half inch from this edge. So we're a half inch from the edge we just seamed. I'm gonna do a little bit of reversing, not much. Just sew down this length. Now when I get to the middle, I'll show you what I'm gonna do, where the, where the uh, seams are at. So when I get to these, um, the seam allowance, or what I call tail, um, what I want to do is I want to fold it so they both go the same direction, so that when I sew my top stitch here, they are, uh, can be sewn into the tails uh, without me having to switch. So basically, I don't want one going like this and like that. I want them to go, go like that. So I'm going to hold them in that position and sew them together so they lay like that.
Here we are at the end, we're gonna do some reversing. Now we can do our top stitch. So what I'll do now is I will take uh, my magnetic guide and remove it. And we will splay this open. So here's where the four panels come together at the center. This tail doesn't necessarily want to go this direction. It could if, if you wanted it to, but it actually wants to lay this direction. So I'm going to basically walk the tail all the way to the end so that it folds that direction, which means it's folded over here. You want to look at the center to find out. So my tail's on the left-hand side. I'm going to put my foot down so that it's uh, right up against this first stitch here. And uh, this will put this top stitch about an eighth inch away from the splayed out section here. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing. And then I'm going to pull left and right as I sew. Everybody's going to see this stitch, so make sure it looks good. I'm going to make sure my tail's going that direction. And it is. So I just got to the center seam. It's the same process. So there's what the top stitch looks like on the outside surface. And there's what it looks like on the bottom surface. Looks really good. So now we look at the, uh, the center here. And this tail doesn't want to go that direction. So it wants to go this direction. So we walk that all the way up to the top here, and that means that the tail goes like that. Yep. So now I'm going to go on the other side of the presser foot. Not a big deal. Presser foot's equal on this machine. And we'll do the top stitch just like we did before, splaying out the fabric, making sure we're sewing in that half inch seam allowance on the underside. Do a little bit of reversing here, and then when we reach the end, we do a little bit of reversing there. Now notice that our seam here isn't exactly in the, in the same spot. That's not a big deal. We're actually gonna be cutting that out. And I also wanted to show to you that I did not scroll the fabric up. I'm just kind of bunching it up underneath the arm and feeding it in. That works just as well. But I'm just gonna to transition to this next seam just like that. Now all of the four corners will have a dog ear similar to this, and all you want to do is you just want to fair it up. So we're going to take the hot knife with the tempered cutting glass on the bottom side and fair it up, probably even chop it off here a little bit. So we'll do that to all four corners. This one's a little bit worse than all of them, so I'm going to show this one. We're going to trim up the dog ear on this one with a hot knife, and e even though this is off here, I'm not going to trim this off. I'm going to leave that like this because we're going to create a hem here. Around the perimeter of the fly, we're going to now create a single hem. So don't expect your fly to sit flat. There's actually a little bit of shape in this, so there should be a little bit of wrinkles like you see here. We're going to turn this so that we're on the wrong side, so our seams are facing up. And then we're going to take our clear acrylic ruler and we're going to strike a line. I do want to show you that if you take this um, chalk pencil here and you take a wet rag, see how nicely the mark comes up? That's just for your information. So we're going to take our clear acrylic ruler and we're going to strike a line that's one and a half inches from the edge of the fabric so we can create our single hem here. So what I like to do is the, the fabric may not be straight so I adjust it so that I'm right along the edge of one and a half inch everywhere that I'm marking if the fabric deviates a little bit. One and a half inches and then right here it's off a little bit so I change this around. So we're going to do this all around the entire perimeter. We're going to apply seam stick about an eighth inch from the raw edge of the fabric all around the entire perimeter. When I get to a corner, I'm just going to take the seam stick and make it bend 
90 degrees. I, you can break it if you'd like and then start again. We'll peel off the transfer paper here and uh, we'll start to hem matching up the raw edge to the line we struck on the fabric all around the perimeter. So here we're coming to a corner. What I'll do is I'll hem it to that corner like that and then I just take this one and I hem it up to that edge like that. So it's just a fold like this. Okay, we're gonna put the magnetic guide on a little bit more than a half inch. In other words, away from the half inch, so it's a little bit deeper than a half inch, but not much more. And I'm gonna start right on that seam here, do a little bit of reversing. And then we will sew around. We're gonna sew around the entire perimeter, and when we get to the end, we're gonna do some reversing. This sews this single hem in place. So I'm coming to this corner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sewing a little bit at a half inch and make a turn. So when I think it's about a half inch, I'm not measuring obviously. So there's about right. I'll bury my needle, lift my foot. Oops, I need to go a little bit more. It wasn't quite right. So I'm going to walk this by hand. Needle's buried, lift my foot, rotate on the needle, lower my foot, continue sewing. So I'm coming to the end here where I started sewing and all I'll do is some reversing. And there we go. We only have one little dog ear here, all the other corners are perfect but that can easily be resolved with a hot knife. Now we're gonna switch to the umbrella sections and we're gonna hem the opening for the fly along its edges first. This is the outside surface. I can feel it's nice and smooth. This is the underside. It's got that coating on it. So I'm gonna flip it up and then I'm going to create a single hem here towards the center of the umbrella. Again, making a line that is one and a half inches uh, along the edge and then folding to that line. These are the panels that will make up the umbrella and this hem is placed along the edge that will be the opening for the fly. So I'm going to take my double-sided tape and I'm going to pl place it again about an eighth inch away from the edge. Peel it up and create this hem and I'm going to do this on all four of the panels on the small um, end of the panel, the ends that'll be towards the center of the umbrella. So I've done all four of the panels for the umbrella and I'm gonna move it to the sewing machine and we will sew that hem. Our umbrella has four gores, yours may have more. So this is our hem on the underside as you can see here and we'll just sew it like we did uh, the other one, doing some reversing in the beginning. And we are a little bit more than a half inch from this folded edge. When we get to the end, we'll do some reversing there as well. We'll do this for all four panels. A relatively new product for Sayerite is the Sayerite sewing machine thread cutter. It's actually awesome. Our umbrella is a four gore umbrella. We're gonna sew those four sections together now to form the umbrella. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but this is shorter. This is longer. This is the hemmed edges. My umbrella is not a square. If it were a square, this would be the same size as this panel. So I have to do the shorter one to the longer one. And I have two panels here. The other two are on the floor. So this would be right sides, right sides facing each other and I put double-sided tape along this edge. So I'm gonna position the panel and then put a sandbag just to keep it from going off the table here. I can't get the whole panel on the table, so I'll just scoot it over, put double-sided tape on this as the outside surface, right along this edge, very close to that edge. I don't want this to be a quarter inch away like I did for the hymns. I want it to be close to that edge because I don't want this glue to show up after I create my first stitch when I splay it open. So 
why I put it very close to the edge. So here's my other panel, and I want to start at the center, which is the side with the hem on it. So once I get in the, in the general position, I'm going to put a sandbag on here, and then I'm going to straighten it out. Peel off the transfer paper. Start at the center where the hems are, like I said. Make sure these edges are lined up and then the outer edges are lined up. Don't stretch one more than the other and baste until you get to the bottom corner. There is, there is some shape in this, so don't expect things to lay perfectly flat. They won't. So I need to move this so I can baste the rest of it. That's the beauty of the weighted sandbag. Um, you can move things and still work on a fairly small table, and baste the rest. So we got to the end and we're a slight bit off, no big deal. Deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide is a little beyond a half inch. I want to put it back on the half inch mark of the needle plate. And here's my um, two hemmed edges. We're going to start here and do a single stitch and then we'll splay it open and do a semi flat belt seam. So we'll start here on this end. We're going to sew down and then um, when we get to the bottom we'll do some reversing and then we'll do the same with the other two panels just like we did for, for this one. So I've splayed this umbrella portion out with that stitch that I just made. This is the shorter side, this is the longer side, I can see it here. So my fly, this is the shorter side. This is the longer side here. Would go on like this, boom, boom, except for obviously overlap it. You can do this if you want, but you don't have to. But notice the top stitch, it's sewing here. So I could sew the top stitch here, but it'll be, it'll switch. And it won't cause any problems whatsoever if you sew it here by accident. But I don't want to do that. I want to follow this. So I'm going to put a line here indicating that this is where I want the top stitch to be sewing in this panel so it matches the fly which will be overlapped like that. So we've marked this one and we have um, three other ones to mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this A and this A so that I know exactly how it orientates when I have to sew the top stitch in the next panel. So I didn't scroll the fabric up here. I'm just going to push it under the arm of the sewing machine. There's where I want my top stitch so I want to make sure my tail or my seam allowance is folded over to the right. Play the fabric out, do a little bit of reversing. And then as I sew, I'm just going to push fabric in here so you'll see what I do. I can feel my tail, it's on the correct side. Just keep feeling for the tail, make sure it's on the right side. I'm going to bury my needle and then I'm going to push some fabric through. Make sure my tail is in the right direction. Feels a little strange there. I'm going to look at it. I don't want to sew any extra fabric in, so I want to make sure that I feel, make sure I don't have any excess fabric in here. And I don't. going to call this one B and this one you can tell is not right in the center of this that's no big deal top stitch still goes over here so that's what we need to do for this one this is a short side this is the long side of the fly okay so I have the two panels that I've sewn together with the top stitch outside surfaces are facing each other this is the long side of my uh, rectangular ish umbrella this is the short side of my rectangular umbrella so all I need to sew this side together. So I'm going to seam stick it, sew it, top stitch it, 
then I'll come back and I'll do the side down here together. Seam stick it, top or stitch it, and then top stitch it just like we did. Okay, so I've laid the umbrella on the table. You can see the large opening in the center here. So this gets basted to this. But the rest of it's hanging off. The rest of it's hanging off the table here. So the way that this gets basted is that this gets turned wrong side out. So you have to, I've already got double sided tape on this side. I have to flip this. Like that. And then I'm going to move it onto the table so I can actually baste it in place like that. So I, I recommend you think this through, but basically you want right sides to face each other. So this gets basted on there like that. So I match up the hemmed edge and start at the center. Start basting down. So we're starting here at the middle and my last top stitch goes on this side. I've confirmed that with my fly. This is my last top stitch. At each one of the ends of the rib, our umbrella attaches with a screw through a grommet. Yours may actually have a pocket. If yours has a pocket, you'll need to make it similar to what your old umbrella has. Ours has grommets, so we need to make reinforcing patches. So this is our scrap fabric. You should have plenty of scrap fabric and we need to make some patches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my clear acrylic ruler and we're gonna make these a four by four uh, uh, rectangle. I'm sorry, a four by four square. So I'm just gonna strike a line all the way across here. Now there's no reason to use a hot knife on these. The uh, raw edge will be in a hem. So we'll just cut all of these out, our eight, for us, eight ribs, four by four patches. Okay, th this is the right side of the fabric. This is the wrong side. I'm gonna, st I'm gonna fold into the wrong side though it probably doesn't matter because it's going to be basted on the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to put a, a strip of basting tape on one edge on the wrong side. So we'll peel off the transfer paper and what I want to do is I want to fold this into a triangle. Okay, that'll just hold it in place. We'll do that with all of these. So now that we have this side basted we want to put double-sided tape over here where it's open and we will fold it one more time so that the raw edges are uh, on top of each other. So what you get is you get a patch that has a finished fold here. Obviously this is finished and this goes into the hem. Okay, it doesn't matter which side we put it on because this is the outside surface. We're just going to put double-sided tape along the uh, bottom edge of each one of these. That way we're, they're ready to be put on to the actual umbrella. Now I made eight of, eight of these all the same, but I forgot that the corners actually just take a two-fold approach. So that's easy to fix. We don't have to cut out new ones. All I need to do is just open it up here like that and then take off this double-sided tape here. So I need to do four of them. They're just uh, triangle, triangles like this. The rest of them are like this, four like that, four like that. We recommend adding hollow between each one of the ribs and also a hem. Hollow is a slight curve inward towards the edge that helps support the fabric along the edge. Okay, it's all sewn together, top stitches are all in place. This is our cutout in the center to allow air to flow out of the umbrella. Now before we can create a hem around the outer perimeter, we need to create some hollow and that hollow will help support the edges. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half so that I can find the center of each one of these gores. So I folded this gore in half and I have the corners matched up and then this edge is laying nice and flat. I'm going to put my finger here and apply pressure. So this should be the center. So I'm going to kind of crease it there. And then I'm going to take my chalk and mark that location. Now I'm going to do that on both sides just so I don't lose that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on all the other gores. So that one's done. We'll take this one.
match up the corner. Probably get a second helper here to hold that or... I'm going to use an awl as a second helper. I'm going to make sure your fabric is laying fairly flat so that you have the exact center here. Yep, right here. So there's my corner and the nice thing is that I can work on half of a gore at a time and here's my center position that I marked. So I'm going to place an awl in this. Now you wouldn't want to do this on a good table but this is a work table. To create the hollow I'm going to use a piece of PVC. For an umbrella we usually make a hollow of about 2% which is one and a half inches approximately and I usually just do one and a half inches for all of the umbrellas like this because the edges are so short and that provides plenty of uh, hollow for each edge. So that's one and a half inches from this edge. Then I'll take my PVC and I'll line it up so the outer edge is at that line and then I will check to make sure it looks good. It's got a nice hollow and that's approximately the center location and then I'll strike a line. So as you can see, that's a hollowed edge. And we'll do that with all the gores. Now this is only half of the gore, so we'll move it over and we'll show you the other half of the gore. the halfway position between ends one and a half inches is here and then I strike my line okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the chalk line that we just made for the hollow and I'm going to use the serrated edge hot knife again just to keep the uh, fabric from unraveling and I'm using the temper cutting glass on the bottom side. So here we're coming to where there is a rib. Go to that corner, cut that out, and then we'll move the fabric and start on the next leg. The serrated edge hot knife that we're using here is the cordless version. It's a great hot knife and in fact it's my favorite hot knife. We do have an edge hot knife that is corded. The only problem with it is that you have to contend with an electrical cord. So the choice is yours. You'll pay a little bit more for this cordless one, but I think it's worth it. Now we're going to put a, a, one, a line one and a half inches from this hollowed edge here so that we can create a single hem. And there are two ways to do that. One is with this tool. This is the Serac Canvas Patterning Ruler. And this metal edge just rides against the uh, edge of the fabric. And you could mark the fabric like this. The second way to do it is with the clear acrylic ruler. Now this edge is not straight. So what you do is you mark when it's on one and a half inches, like here. It's on the one and a half inches and now it's shifting. So I'll move the clear acrylic ruler like this. And I only mark when, I, when the line is on the one and a half inches. That way we follow the curve. Now we're gonna apply basting tape around the entire perimeter and this tape is gonna be about an eighth inch 
away from the raw edge of the fabric. It doesn't have to be precise. We put the line on the wrong side of the fabric and the double-sided tape on the wrong side of the fabric so the seams are actually facing up. Make sure you do that. You don't want to get this on the wrong side. This is the middle of each gore and we have our patch that is folded over four layers or four times, I'm sorry. So I'm going to peel off the transfer paper and I want to put it on so that it doesn't have to be uh, three quarter inch here. I'm going to actually put it up a little bit higher here. So when this hem gets folded, it'll fold right over this patch. So watch. These patches are going to be used for the installation of our number zero spur grommet. Now your umbrella may have come with a pocket because many of them have pockets instead of grommets with screws in them to attach them to the ribs. If they do, then uh, follow the principles that uh, your old umbrella had for the pocket at each one of these locations uh, for a grommet. So you can see that captures the patch. So we'll do that in the middle of all the gores. Now before we get to the actual corner patches, this is the one where it's just folded twice like this. <clears throat> what we want to do is before we get the hem close to this is we want to base this in place. <clears throat> so this is the folded edge, the two raw edges go inside the hem and we want it to be at least uh, three quarter of an inch from the raw edges. It's not a perfect fit patch because it's basically just a triangle, but it's not going to matter as long as it's, you can fold over it and kind of hide that edge. It doesn't have to tuck all the way in. So now watch what happens now. Peel off the transfer paper and we'll complete this hem around this corner. And then you'll know exactly what to do at each corner. Okay, now this is always going to stick out a little bit and what you might want to do is take a hot knife and trim that because it's always going to be visible. I'm going to trim it so that I don't burn my table. Like that. And then we start folding this direction. And there's what that corner looks like. If you see any little fabric sticking out, just trim it without hurting this fold over here. So I can always trim it even at a, a little bit of an angle here, which sometimes looks better, like that. So then when it's sewing, this is what your corner will look like. This looks really good. So we're sewing around the perimeter, securing this hem on the bottom side, and we're sewing a little bit more than a half inch from the folded edge. And when we come upon any of the corners, or the patches in the middle of the gores, we need to make sure that they don't move on us um, when we get to them. Before I get to the corner, I'm going to bury my needle so it doesn't move. Check to make sure the patch is in place, and it is. Make sure this is folded nicely, which it is. I'll sew almost a half inch to the opposite edge, right about there, maybe a little bit too far. So I'm going to put it in reverse so I can sew bury my needle back a little bit. Needle buried, foot's lifted, roll the assembly, and then sew down the next side. Don't forget to lower your foot, otherwise you could have sewing problems. So I can feel the patch here, so I want to make sure it's in position, and it is. Let me just sew right through that. I'm going to put a Sayerite tag in here. Uh, which shows the world that you did it yourself because we uh, don't make any custom jobs. So if you'd like to display that, hey, uh, I made this myself, this tag sort of says that in a way. So we'll just unbaste this and rebaste it down. And then when we sew through that, we'll sew that tag in place. So we sewed around the entire perimeter securing the hem. Now we come back to the patches. And first we're going to start with this corner patch. We'll do the same thing for all the patches. We'll start sewing here, and I will do a little bit of reversing in the hem. Sew across, and do a little bit of reversing here. And that's all that's necessary for the corner patches. So we'll repeat that for all the corner patches. 
Now I'll show you what to do with the intermediate patch at the center of the gore. A little later on, we'll be installing the number zero spur grommets in each one of these patches. So here, we'll start here, do a little bit of reversing. Come to the corner up here, bury our needle, lift our foot, pivot on the needle, and then come down this other side. Don't forget to lower your foot before you sew. And do a little bit of reversing here. And we'll do that for all the center uh, gore locations for the patch. Next up, we're gonna cut the hole and install a hidden zipper. The hole in the center of the fly allows for the umbrella to be slid over all the hardware in the ribs, and the zipper allows it to expand so all that can fit through that hole. So this is our old umbrella, and we need to create the same size circle um, that uh, the old one had. Yours may be different. So this is a, a zipper, so I'm going to zip this up, and then I'm going to Velcro it. And then I'm going to splay this out and I'm going to measure the, uh, the diameter of the circle so that I can create one on my new one. It's three and a half. Okay, we're going to make a, a six by six uh, patch out of our scrap material here. And the reason being is that this will reinforce that uh, area for the circle at the center of our fly. And we want to cut this out with a hot knife. So this is the outside of our fly, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Sarah Canvas patterning ruler with an awl, and I'm going to draw a circle on this. We haven't put the patch on the back side yet, but we will be doing that. And I'm going to draw it at one and three quarter here with the Sarah Canvas patterning ruler. And this should create our correct size circle that is three and a half inch for us. Yours may be different. So we're going to put a zipper in this so that we can get it around the frame and usually the zipper goes on the longer side. This side's longer than that side and it goes straight up from the bottom edge. So I'm going to split the circle making sure this is straight. It doesn't have to be perfect and I'm going to strike a line like that. Then I'm going to use my uh, hot knife and I'm going to cut to the circle. Actually, we don't want to do that yet. We're going to put the patch on first. Whoa, I actually want to stop cutting. I want to put this patch on the underside first, so good thing we stopped. Okay, we'll put some double-sided tape around the perimeter. The reason I do it around the perimeter is I just don't get any wrinkles then. I mean, you could put it on two sides if you want, but I like to make sure that when it's basted down, it stays down when I sew around it. Now we need to turn this wrong side up. And I am going to stick it with the wrong with the uh, right side facing out, not that it matters. Okay, we're going to put the patch on so that it's centered. I'm not going to measure. I can pretty much tell right where it goes. Make sure there's no wrinkles and we'll sew around this perimeter. So now that we have our patch sewn on, you can tell here by the stitches, uh, we can actually cut to the circle and then cut the circle out. And that patch will hopefully reinforce everything for us. And you do want to do it with a hot knife. If you don't have this, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. Get it around that so I can actually cut at this angle. And as you can see, because it's reinforced, we could actually sew around this as well, which is not a bad idea. Um, I think I will sew a straight stitch around this just to make sure that it's reinforced well. We're just gonna sew really close to this uh, 
circle edge and you can see that I'm pulling the fabric straight which makes it really easy to sew around a circle especially if there's a slit in it like there is in this one. This is the old umbrella and I want to start the zipper in the same spot just to avoid hardware so it started four inches down from the opening at the top. So here's where my zipper will basically stop here and here on the other side as well. So we need to measure this whole length here. I get uh, 19 and a half inches and I need to cut a strip that's uh, at least uh, two extra inches longer than that. So I'll cut it to approximately 22 inches. So I have some scrap fabric here. You should have plenty. And I'm going to make my strip here uh, four inches wide. Now it's extremely important to put the basting tape on the wrong side. This is the correct side or the outside surface. So I need to put the basting tape on this side. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit at the top here to create approximately a half inch hem. So I'm going to fold this back. I'm not going to measure. I just want a finished edge. Then I'm going to put a strip of basting tape down the long edge here. Then what I'll do is I'll fold this right in half and I usually like to start in the center. Uh, that way it's just easier to work from the center out going one direction and then coming back to the center and work the opposite direction when you're doing pieces like this. Okay, so I'm bringing it over to the sewing machine. This is the folded edge. I'm going to sew a straight stitch really close to that edge. There's no magic location for this straight stitch, but I believe this makes it look better to kind of hide a zipper. This is a zipper flap uh, to hide the zipper from the sun. When I get to the top, I'll do some reversing. There we go. So this is the outside surface facing up, and this is the left-hand side as I'm facing it. It's the right hand side for you. So this is the outside surface and what I want to do is I want to put seam stick on from where we want the zipper to stop which is we already marked and we want it as close to this raw edge as possible because I don't want the tape to get close to the zipper's teeth. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom edge and then peel off the transfer paper. Now I've already cut my zipper to the right size and I've separated it. This is a number five uh, coil zipper and you can see that there's teeth that protrude here on this side. And if you look at the other side, the teeth do not protrude here. The teeth have to be facing the outside surface of the fabric. So I want to start at that stop position, base this down along this edge, all the way to the bottom. And it should go to the bottom and protrude by maybe an eighth of an inch or so, which it does. So that zipper's down. So here's that uh, strip of fabric with the fold over here and the raw edges over here and the top that's been folded under here. This is just left raw at the bottom. I'm going to match this up right to this circle here and then run it down here and find our stop position, which is right here that we marked here. And I'm going to transfer that to this. Okay, so that's where we want the zipper to uh, start. So now we take the other side of the zipper and we baste it to this. So I'm going to put basting tape at our stop point on this zipper um, protector or flange that protects it from the sun all the way down. Then I'm going to peel off the transfer paper and I'm going to baste it with the zipper teeth facing down and the edge right up against this edge. Hey, don't pull on the zipper. You can pull, you can stretch a zipper if you're not careful. I have way too much zipper, but I'm just going to baste it down anyway. I can cut the excess off. Okay, so now what I do is I flip this over and we apply basting tape here all the way from the top to the bottom. Now I peel off and make sure that basing tape is very close to that raw edge. Peel that off and then I base this so it's directly across from the opposite zipper and right along that edge. Like that. 
Now let's just go ahead and trim off this excess down here at the bottom. And I'm not going to use a hot knife for this. This will this will come around and be folded to the back side. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to I don't really need to sew my first stitch all the way up here. I can actually start here and sew here, which will secure that zipper. Then it'll flip out like this and I will sew a top stitch here so that is exposed. I'll come over here. I'll, my first stitch will actually start up here, sew down here, and then when this is uh, folded out like this, there'll be a top stitch that'll be sewn from here all the way down, and this will be the flap that hides the zipper, but yet when you open it up, the zipper will be exposed. So we're going to start from the bottom here. I'm going to put my presser foot very close to those, the zipper's teeth, and I'm going to move my needle all the way to the left here because I want to get as close to the zipper's teeth as possible. Um, and you could sew on this side if you wanted to, but this is going to work for us. The reason that we're sewing fairly close to the zipper's teeth is that we don't want the double-sided tape to show up when we're done, and we're using a 3 8 inch wide double-sided tape. So just be sure to sew very close to the presser foot so that hopefully we don't have any exposed double-sided tape because a quarter inch seam stick would be better here than the 3 8 inch. Now when we get past the zipper, I want to try to continue with the same path that I was all the way up to here. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. And again, I'm not going to start it all the way at the top. I'm just going to start where the zipper is. Okay, so what we do now is we, we actually fold this out and do a top stitch, but we want this to fold all the way to the top. So you can either use double-sided tape or you can just crease it well. Um, you want it to follow the same plane as the one we just sewed. So in other words, it folds nicely all the way down to that point. So that looks pretty good. So I just creased it well. I'll put it back in the sewing machine. And I'm going to sew very close to that fold. So I'm going to move my needle all the way to the right. I don't want to sew um, too far away from this fold. Did a little bit of reversing. See how I take my zipper and I fold it back like that? It's going to look great when we're done. Then when we get to the bottom, we do some reversing. Beautiful zipper. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side here. I'm going to splay it open so very close to that fold. My needle's on the right hand side of this, the Ultrafeed LSC. I'm going to splay it open, check to make sure my zipper is laying right on the bottom, which it is. Now my zipper stops right about here, but I'm going to continue to sewing all the way to the top. And then I'm going to do some reversing here. Look how gorgeous that is. And if you flip it open, there's our zipper. It's completely hidden. So we're going to put the zipper on starting here at the bottom. I have a little bit of extra zipper on this side. I need to match up the bottom hem right there, which means this goes down. So you just need to install this so that both sides are even.
going to take some of our scrap zipper and cut two small sections to create a stop once my slider is in position. I don't want it to come off the end. I'm going to press it into the end of this um, zipper here. Now we decided to use a coil zipper and it's a little bit more difficult to get these there to marry go. with a coil zipper. If you use a number five Vislon zipper and you try to create a stop like this, it's easy to marry them together. There. So what they're, they're married together, what we'll do is we'll use a hot knife here. We only want to uh, burn the top surface. With a Vislon, you could burn both the back side and the top. But with this, you can only do this to that side. Let that cool a little bit, and that creates a great stop where the slider will not come off. So the zipper allows for just access for us to get all the hardware into the fly. We don't want this zipper to come off the end. It's not a, a finished zipper. So that's why we left this excess fabric here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this back and sew across it. That way, we're gonna have a end here where the zipper will come down, it'll open up, allow us to get our hardware in there, but it won't ever come off of either end. So we're gonna take this to the machine and sew here. Okay, with this folded, we're just gonna Sew it, put my needle in the center position. Even though there's a zipper folded back, that won't matter. But I do want to sew carefully once I get to the zipper, so I don't want to break anything, a needle or anything. And then I'm going to do some reversing. So I'm going to sew this fairly well. I don't want this to come apart. That should do it. We want a four inch strip for us of hook and loop. We're gonna put the loop over here, right up against that edge. Okay, so this Looks like it covers that edge perfectly, which means this goes right up against that edge as well. So you want to try to figure out the right position for this. Now, I don't want it to be married to each other yet, so I'm just going to try to keep it out of the way. There we go. We'll unzip this a little bit so that we can take these to the machine and sew it. Doesn't matter if one's a little bit longer than the other. Doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to sew around the perimeter, doing a little bit of reversing at the beginning and the end. I'm not going to sew across it yet. I'm just going to sew the two long edges, then I'll probably sew across the short edges. So that one's on. We'll cut these trailers away. Now we're just going to do the same thing to this one. Next up, we'll be creating the fly attachment tabs. This will attach the fly to the umbrella. Okay, we're using our scrap fabric and we are going to make uh, tabs. So we're going to cut a rectangle that is three inches wide. We need, for us, we need to make uh, six tabs. And uh, the tabs are spaced anywhere from 14 inches to um, 20 inches apart. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do that. So I'm just marking them three by three, so making uh, squares three by three. This is the right side of the fabric that I'm marking on, not the wrong side. These can be cut out with scissors because all edges are going to be uh, hidden or uh, folded under, I should say. Don't cut them apart yet, just cut the strip out. Now turn it over onto the wrong side and place a line in the center, which would be one and a half inches all the way down the length. <clears throat> now take double-sided tape, this is the wrong side, and run it down the two long edges. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. Start folding from the center because it's easier, and we're going to fold to that center line. Then we'll peel the left side off and do the same thing, folding to that center line or the edge of the fabric now. 
Now I put a row of double-sided tape here on one side, doesn't matter which side. Peel off the transfer paper and fold it in half. Start at the center because it's easier. Line up the edges. My needle's in the right position so I can get close to that edge. I'm going to put it in center position just to show you you can do it that way too. Move this over a little bit because I want to sew really close to that edge. Now we're going to take a hot knife and we're first going to touch the ends because they have not been hot knifed. We don't want it to unravel. And then we're going to cut it at each one of those marks and this seals the edges. On this short side, it looks like I just need one in the center. We're going to secure the ends down as well. And for the longer one here, we're going to put uh, two, one here and one here. Uh, to determine the center, I'm just going to fold this in half <coughs> instead of measuring because I think it's a little bit easier. Then I just mark the center position here and do the same thing. here. It doesn't have to be perfect. So for the long side, it's 54 inches. I've measured it and I'm going to divide that by three. 54 divided by three. So 18 inches. Every 18 inches I'm going to put a mark. 18 inches here and I'll just do it from here. 18 inches here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. This is where we'll have our tabs. So for all these positions that I marked, I'm going to take one of these tabs and I'm going to position it approximately an inch up from the bottom folded edge here. And we're going to sew it in place. I'm not even going to baste it. I'm just going to take each one of the tabs and sew it in place here. And I'm not even going to measure. I'm going to guess at this. Uh, we can sew, you know, two rows of a straight stitch reversing back and forth here, uh, going about uh, an inch or so, stopping here, or we can do some zigzag stitching here. We're going to do that for all locations. Okay, remember this is the wrong side of the fabric. My hems are facing up. So I'm about an inch from this edge, right across from that mark. I'm going to put the machine in zigzag here and I'm going to reduce the stitch length and also the stitch reverse. And then I'm going to sew this in place doing a lot of reversing. Now I'm also going to move it over a little bit and do another row. So you can do this with a straight stitch or a zigzag, doesn't matter. Just make sure you reverse quite a few times. You want these tabs to be in securely. Looks good. Now we'll continue to do this for all the other ones as well. Next we'll take that fly and place it on top of our umbrella over the opening. We're putting the fly on and we have each one of the corners matched up with the numbers that we have, B, B, C, C. So we want to center this, and usually you can center it by the seams. They'll almost line up. Don't worry if they're a little bit off. And then what I'll do is I'll actually measure. I can feel the opening here. This is at six inches. Yep. At six inches, about six inches here, and it's a little bit off here, so I'm gonna come down here. Five and a half, five and a half, okay, so it's centered. So it's laying flat right now. Now there's a little shape in it because it goes up uh, a little bit, um, and that creates a teeny bit of shape, but it's flat. And what I wanna do is, at each one of these corners, I want to lightly mark with my chalk where this corner is, okay, if it's laying flat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it up a half inch. So that's approximately a half inch. Is there any specific measurement? No. A half inch just kind of creates a little bit of an opening like this so that air can escape more easily. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this with a more solid line like this. And that's where I will be sewing that down. Now we'll do that at all four corners. So this is it laying flat right here. We move it back a half inch, we mark it, and this is where we'll sew it, which will create an opening for us. 
Now at each one of the tabs, like here's a tab, again it's laying flat. You can see it's on my first mark here. What I'll do is I'll come over here and I'm going to put my finger on the tab, which is right here. And this is where it falls uh, normally and I'll move it up approximately half inch and then I'll actually put lines around it to indicate where I'm going to be sewing it on. And we'll do that for every single tab location. So again, relaxed, it's down here. Move it up about a half inch, mark the location, we'll sew it on there. And we'll do that with every one of the tabs. Now that the location of the fly is marked on the umbrella, we'll sew the tabs and the corners of the fly. So, so I'm gonna put my machine back in a straight stitch, maximum stitch length. And then I have to feed all this material underneath the throat of the sewing machine until I get to that corner. There it is, see the mark here? And it says C. C is right here. So now that we have that corner, I need to rotate this around so I can sew along the seam. Like that. Now I get my... <clears throat> There's C. I get my fly. And I position it here. And the, see how the top stitch is in line? So I'm just going to match up, up to those marks that I made, make sure that there's no excess fabric in here, everything is laying flat. And then what I'm going to do is uh, sew directly on top of that uh, top stitch or close to it. And I'm about uh, two inches from the corner here. So I'm going to sew all the way to the corner, do some reversing. that is enough. So that secures this well and we'll move on to the next corner. Now I'm going to reposition my uh, fabric and do the next corner making sure that the edges line up. So now I can position my fly. This is the one without the letter on it. I have one corner that didn't have a letter. Right there. Move it over so that it's in line with that seam. And so. It's a labor of love. There's one of my tab spots. So I'm going to put the foot down on top of that until I get the appropriate tab at that location, which is this one. That kind of holds everything in place. And we'll lift my presser foot and position this one in the right spot. Make sure you're happy with it. Try to sew only in the tab. Try not to put a stitch hole in the, in the fabric. That'll keep uh, leaking to a minimal. We're doing a zigzag stitch, reversing several times. Then I will lift the presser foot with the needle out and put a second row next to that first. Reversing several times. So we wanna do this for all those tab locations. Let's go ahead and move ahead. Our there we go. has grommets that screws go through and attach to the ribs. Yours may have pockets. We're going to show you how to do the grommets. We're going to be installing uh, number zero spur grommets. They have teeth and it's a fairly thick metal and those teeth actually bite into the lip of the or the rolled rim of the grommet. So these are very nice grommets. If your sc screw head is too small and, may, and go through the center of the number zero spur grommet, just put a washer on it and then screw it into your uh, umbrella. We'll show you that later on. 
We'll be using the Sayerite drill hole cutter set to drill hole in for our grommet. This is the number zero hole cutter. We might have to use a number one, but we're going to start with the zero, the smaller one. Okay, we're going to put one right in the corner here, just about this distance, so about a quarter inch from all sides, a little, about a half inch from the corner. So that's where we want to put our hole. We have our cutting pad on the bottom side so we don't damage the hole cutter. And that's all there is to it. Now, more than likely, I'm going to have to use a bigger hole because there's a lot of fabric here. Let's see. Yep, kind of like what I thought. I could probably fit it in there, but it would be easier for me to just to make a little bit bigger hole. So this is the number one hole cutter. I'm just going to enlarge this hole a little bit. And then we'll put the male portion of the grommet through the hole like that. I'm going to take my die set, anvil on the bottom, teeth facing down over top of the male portion, tool, and then give it a few blows of the mallet. Nice installation. There's the location for the center rib that's not uh, on a corner. And we are going to put a hole right there. Put the male portion through the hole like that. Put the anvil underneath. On top, tool through here, give her a few blows of the mallet, and the number zero spur grommet is installed. Top Notch 1S is very abrasion resistant. Sumbrella upholstery fabric is not so abrasion resistant. In this chapter, we're going to show you how to make a tie, which we recommend for all umbrellas to keep it from flapping in the wind when it's not in use. One of the last tasks is to make a tie, and I'm going to measure the old one. This one's about 62 inches in length, so I'm going to make one that same length. So I'm going to make my strip two inches wide, and then we'll fold it in. And I'm going to make it about 62 inches, somewhere around there. Okay, we've cut it out with scissors. We don't need to use a hot knife, and I'm marking a line in the center, again, so that we can fold into that center line. So this is one inch from the edge. We're going to put basting tape on both long edges. This line and this basting tape is being placed on the underside of this fabric. This is top notch 1S. It is always easier to start in the middle and I'm going to fold to that line and then work my way left or right. And then we'll start from the center again once we get that side done and we'll fold basically to that previous edge. I'm going to put double-sided tape down one long side, and then we'll fold it in half. So we just fold it in half so that the edges are lined up with each other. Now before we take this to the sewing machine, I'm just going to use the hot knife. That way we seal the ends, because I'm not going to fold this under. Um, this just seals the edge of the fabric nicely. We'll do this to both edges. Then we can do reversing there. Okay, we'll do some reversing here at the end, and then we'll sew really close to the edge we just folded over to. All the way down and do reversing at the end. Now from one of these corners, this is the one with the seam, we'll measure up, and we usually put the tie about 50 inches up from the corner. So there's 50 inches right here, and we'll just mark that general location. It doesn't have to be exact. So we'll take our tie and find the middle just by folding it in half right there. And we'll take this to the machine and we'll sew it on. This is the middle of the tie right here. There's our mark. We're going to lay it on so that it uh, crosses over the seam like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the machine in zigzag. And we're going to, and you could do this with straight stitch as well, but uh, we're going to do uh, two rows of a zigzag here just to make sure that it stays in place.
one there, and then we'll uh, come over to the side of this and put another row. That should be good enough to hold it in place. We are now ready to install the umbrella onto the frame. Okay, so I have my umbrella laying so that the outside surface is facing up, and I've opened up my zipper here for the fly. And we want to start feeding it onto the bottom. And you want to catch every one of these legs as you go through. That's why the zipper is installed in here. So we caught that. Oops, I missed that one. Now I got it. So we got all the legs. So now we just walk it up. Oh, also you need to make sure the legs don't go through the fly, which one, there's one going through the fly here. Okay. And we'll go all the way up here. And we will tuck this circular part around this cone. That's all it does is tuck underneath there. Like so. And I'm going to turn it around so you can kind of see this zipper part. So now we take our Velcro and we hook it down like that. So now she's attached. We take our zipper and zip it up. To the stop position right there and the top is secured now okay so if I open this up you can see that there is a long rib the next longer rib and then the shorter rib and so each section attaches it doesn't matter really how you, how you have the umbrella rotated you just obviously want the long ribs to go to the long seams and then this one to the next shorter ones and this one so once you get everything lined up, you just put your screws in. Now, some umbrellas have pockets instead of grommets with screws, and you can fashion those umbrellas with the pockets as your old umbrella would have had. You can use that as a reference on how to make the pockets. So they would just slip over the ends. Ours are going to screw in through the grommet. Now, if your screw head is not big enough, ours are, you would use a washer over the screw so that it can encompass the grommet. But uh, our grommets, these number zero grommets, are just about perfect. As we discussed earlier, your umbrella may have pockets that actually capture the end of the ribs. Ours do not. Okay, now we should be able to raise it. Now, hopefully we don't have the rope going over one of our ribs. If we do, if you get any kind of tension, you want to stop and make sure that your rope is not going between a rib. And there we go. Wow, gorgeous. The replacement umbrella for a rectangular or square shaped umbrella is now complete. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools list. We picked a fabric called Top Notch 1S that's available at the Sayrite website. You can also choose a Sumbrella upholstery fabric, which is very common for umbrellas like this, except for you do have to deal with the uh, salvage edge that has to be cut away. To determine the amount of fabric and supplies that you need to make an umbrella for your particular frame, just check out the Sayrite website and scroll down to the fabric calculator. It'll tell you exactly what you need to order from Sayrite.
I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.